presentations, lexical presentations, and put them on a platform for students to access before they come to the class. And when they actually come into our classes, we're going to spend all the time doing the dynamic, practical, practice-based activities in the classroom. So we'll free up all of that time that you guys were spending drawing timelines on the board and explaining that uh, have passed the past participle is the present perfect. We don't need to do any of that because that's all going to be on the video content that the students will have seen before they come into the classes. So students will be happier, classes will be more effective, we'll have more time for the fun, dynamic activities, sales will go up, school will dominate, this will be a revolution. <laughs> Starting next Monday, I think. Okay. So the thought experiment that they recommend in this book is to say, well, I want you all to imagine now, next Monday has passed, a whole year has passed since we introduced this approach, and it's been an unmitigated disaster. <laughs> Students are complaining, you're all complaining, parents are complaining, sales of courses have dropped, <laughs> my hair's fallen out, you're all up in arms. I want you just to think for a couple of minutes. What happened in that year? What went wrong? What went wrong? What was the things that happened in that year that you thought, this is the reason it went wrong? So just do that thought experiment for a couple of minutes. Talk to the person next to you. What potentially has gone wrong in the last year? We're now mentally, we're a year in to this new methodology that I suggested. What's gone wrong in that year that's led us to failure rather than success? So, one year on. Staff meeting, speaker meetings, what went wrong in the last year? What did I do wrong? <laughs> okay, so I didn't train the teachers, I didn't explain the methodology, there was no professional development to support them. Anything else? No piloting, no trials, no experiments with students. No, what else went wrong? no feedbacks from students and their parents. Right, I didn't check what they did. I didn't check during the process, I didn't check before the process, I didn't sample the feeling, the atmosphere in the class. Now a year and I, I know the feeling because I've seen the end of year surveys, but I didn't check in the process. What else went wrong? Maybe the goal was not clear for me and them. Right, okay, okay. so there was no explanation. I just stood up in front of the staff for a meeting and said, we're doing it, let's go for it. Oh. The how? Yeah. What else might have gone wrong in that process? Maybe they what if it was your school? What might be a challenge to this being success in your school? The input wasn't appropriate to the results that were expected. Okay, yeah, so there was kind of a mistrust of the whole principle behind it. What, would, that this better, would this result in better learning? Probably the system wasn't adapted to the area or something like that. Right, absolutely. So this thing about their expectations, but also the system, that maybe the, the platform that I hosted all these videos on was absolutely rubbish. It didn't have the bandwidth for the students watching the videos. So probably the benefits were like uh, every teacher, they were not explained really, so they didn't understand what actually brings it to them personally, for every teacher. How does it make their life better? Yeah, so, so many of the teachers didn't believe in it, didn't trust it, hadn't been convinced, and part of the teachers didn't even bother watching the videos themselves, so they were just trying to do the old classroom activities, and so it wasn't working in any sense for them. Maybe the videos themselves were rubbish. Maybe I didn't put enough time and effort into constructing the these videos. Was very the content was really poor. Students watched um, the first 30 seconds and then, oh, forget it. This is no way to learn uh, language. Um, and the staff, maybe, the staff wasn't motivated enough. Okay, the staff wasn't on board, the staff wasn't going forward, it was all my idea, there was no buy-in from the, the staff. Maybe half the students watched the videos online and the other half didn't, so when they came into the classroom I didn't know what to do with the half who hadn't seen the videos. Should I recap and go back or should I march on because it's the new methodology? So all of these things we can predict, but for a manager, we often don't take the time to think through all those things. We don't take the time to, to allow that experiencing that resistance which is kind of under the surface to emerge. And so it's a very valuable uh, approach when you're thinking about reform, new ideas, to allow these fears, these potential barriers to success to come out. An activity like this where people have no, there's no um, axe to grind, there's no uh, personal uh, problem with suggesting these problems because we're hypothesizing, we're talking about what, what might go wrong 
what might have gone wrong in the year we've, uh, we've studied and we've, we've tried this approach. And so verbalizing, visualizing, imagining the, the future of this process allows the manager's incentive, because I was really keen, do you remember? In the staff meeting, I was really enthusiastic and I wanted, so all my drive was intended to tell you, don't worry, I've thought about everything, it's all going to be all right. And sometimes managers do need to be that, uh, that driving force, they do need to be the motivator, they do need to be one that suggests the change and embodies the change and carries forward the change. But an activity like this brings people on board and gives people a voice, gives people a chance to share their, their nervousness, their potential uh, resistance, and then, in the next stage, their suggestions for how we might do things differently if we do believe this is a way to go. So that's just an example there, because what we really want in our, in our staff is a, a kind of a whole staff mentality. And I love this little story, um, which comes from a book called The Magic of Metaphor, which is a lovely book with stories that uh, teachers, trainers can use to, to make points to, to have metaphorical um, relations between practice and, and uh, principles. And this story is, talks about a, a president who went to see uh, for a tour around the space agency um, when the, uh, the country was trying to uh, launch a, a rocket to, to land on the moon. And uh, he had all these tours of the, the fantastic rocket and all the, the, uh, the walls covered with mathematical equations and talked to the high-powered scientists who were going to get in there. And on the way out, he, uh, he passed the janitor in the hall mopping the floor, said, oh, what do you do here? And the janitor said, same as everyone else, just trying to put a man on the moon. And this idea that we're all working towards the same end goal, that we all have different parts to play, I think is very powerful as a, as a metaphor. Don't tell that story when it's a, a group of just your teachers, because they'll say, what, you mean we're like the janitors? And <laughs> but with a big group, it's that idea that we are all working towards the same goal. And yes, some of us will perform in different roles, but it's why um, a whole staff approach to professional development is so powerful. Because we're not just training and developing teachers to do things better, we're also training the front of office staff to understand what those changes are, and to also be uh, vocal spokespeople for that change and to also believe in that change. It's really important that when we think about professional development, we think about sharing those ideas among the staff, not just in the people who are going to be the astronauts to land on the moon, but also the people who have to do all the other parts to support that. We all have to, to believe in it. Because I think what we need, um, my belief, is that what we really need to encourage as an ethos within an organisation, as managers, as directors, is the idea that we can give people both roots and wings. The roots give them the, the foundations, the stability to know, they know what their, their job is, they know what they're, they're expected to do, they know the requirements and they have the resources to do that, and the wings are then the chance to innovate, to have their own ideas, to feel that they have a, a contribution to make, to show that they can show some autonomy within the system and they can um, allow uh, or they feel their ideas and their suggestions are valued and acknowledged as well. So this idea of roots and wings is something that um, I talked about in a recent article after uh, Niall had been awarded the um, number one school in the UK for, for teaching and learning in our, uh, our accreditation um, inspections. And for me, I feel that that's what I try and encourage within the staff, is to know that they have a role to perform, of course, not everybody can do everything, and there is a very clear um, job description or outline of their responsibilities, and they know that they have the resources and the promise from me to get those resources, but they also have the wings to say, why don't we try this, can I do this, can we experiment with this, or can I go and see how someone else works, can I understand this better, can I do something more, um, more interesting? for want of a better word, in my day-to-day uh, -day life than what I'm doing at the moment. And if you've got the roots, then we can allow the wings to grow. Um, but then there's this interesting dilemma about autonomy. For many years, there's been a lot of focus on, on learner autonomy and the, the role of uh, autonomous learning in, uh, in language education, in much education, based really on this uh, Lao Tzu quote, you may have read it, it's quite a, a common one in the field of autonomy. Give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach him how to fish, and you feed him for a lifetime. So, give the learners the resources, and they can learn on their own. Give the staff everything they need, 
and they can do their job without support. But then there's another story, and this story comes again from the Magic of Metaphor book about a caged bird. And the caged bird would sit on his perch in the cage, hung in the living room of a house. And every day he would look out of the window wistfully as the birds flew around in the sky and swooped down and landed on the balcony, pecked at the grain and then flew off, freedom in their wings, the, the swoop and the swirling air around them. The dream was there. That's what I want to be, the bird thought. And one day, the bird's owner inadvertently left the cage door open. The bird sat on his perch and looked out through the cage door and saw the bird swooping in the sky and landing on the balcony, sampling the fresh air and the air currents. And at the end of the day, the bird's owner came home. The door of the cage was open, and the bird was still sitting on its perch. It had made an autonomous decision that actually they did want that support. They did want that to be given. And I think it's very easy to forget that many learners and many staff actually do value the support that's given to them and the constraints with which they're working because it gives them that stability, it gives them that support that they pay for or they expect from their, their organisation. And many learners feel, I want my teacher to be that resource. I don't want to be told to go off and do it on my own because I've got the resources to do it. That's not what I come for. And we have to find the balance between giving full autonomy and respecting the autonomous decision to want the support instead. And I think it's a tricky thing for a manager to decide where are we going to pitch our organization's ethos between the full autonomy and the structured support which is actually valued by many people. Okay, let's take another tack. Here's a sentence for you to unscramble. Can you make with the person next to you a decent sentence out of this? I'll give you a clue. The first word in the sentence is the. <laughs> no more help. 60 seconds to make a sentence out of this. No, I mean, the past is always in the present tense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, the because you all, you all have a teaching background where you work in education, you automatically thought, well, it must be either future tense or past tense or present tense. Actually, you're saying the past is always in the present and the future is always tense. So it's not this idea of the future tense, the perfect tense, the present tense, the past tense, it's not this idea of tension. And I think one of the things that we need to manage in our field is this idea of the future. What's around the corner? What's coming next? What is going to be changed and changed which we can control and change which we can't control? And of course, people are always going to bring their conceptions, their beliefs, their ideas from the way they were taught, from the way they were trained, from the way uh, they've done things so far to their present reality. And the future is always going to be a little bit tense. There's a lot of tension about technology and what effect it will have on language education. There's some amazing projects which I think are, are really um, going to change the way we think about teaching. These are, are kids using um, VR. virtual reality, VR. They have little Google Cardboard um, goggles which they put the smartphones inside. And they are experiencing another world and they're able to see that world in um, in virtual reality, turning their heads to see different aspects of that environment. There are also programs where the teacher can control what they see when they're in there and draw their attention to particular aspects. It has particular applications and an interest in um, the world of clear teaching, where we can actually take learners to a particular context and we can say, okay, let's look together around this, um, this workshop or this hospital or this um, uh, outdoor feature. We can go, let's look at that together, let's look at this, go and explore this, what do you see here? And we can actually bring the outside world into the class.